With Starship, we're aiming for full and rapid reusability. I mean, I think we're uh, close to having the hardware ready to go, and I think we should try to do that as soon as we can. At this point, highly confident that we'll get to orbit this year. SpaceX is gearing up for a key test of its immense rocket that is designed for commercial launches as well as the Mars mission Elon Musk has long sought after. Near a beach east of Brownsville, Texas, employees at Musk's space company are preparing for the inaugural orbital flight of Starship, the towering rocket system that the company has been developing for years to one day launch into deep space. Using 33 of SpaceX's new Raptor 2 engines, the super heavy booster will produce 17 million pounds of thrust at liftoff, which is nearly double that seen, heard, and felt on the Artemis 1 launch. The Starship itself has six Raptor 2 engines and will have the capacity to bring more than 220,000 pounds of crew and cargo to low Earth orbit, which is slightly more than the current SLS capacity. Combined, Starship and Super Heavy will become the most powerful rocket in the world. In in recent months, SpaceX has built momentum through successively more robust static fire engine tests of its Super Heavy Booster prototype number 7 and its Starship prototype SN24, two bright candidates for Starship's first orbital flight. SpaceX has stated it prefers to keep Starship test flights in Texas. The initial test mission would last around 90 minutes, beginning with a fiery blast of the ship's booster over the Gulf of Mexico. It isn't clear when SpaceX will attempt the first flight, after the dates Musk has discussed came and went, some officials at the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA, a customer for a version of Starship previously said they thought the mission could occur in early December. Musk himself also shared via Twitter that getting Starship into orbit is one of his main goals this year. Regardless, one thing is for sure, and that is, such an ambitious rocket system would certainly have consumed significant resources and and faced formidable technical hurdles. The company is using new engines it developed on Starship and wants to be able to quickly and rapidly reuse the vehicle akin to how airlines operate planes. Starship is also really big. Fully stacked, it stands taller than the rocket NASA recently used on its first Artemis moon mission, the SLS. Um, there's a lot of risk associated with this first launch, so I would not say that uh, it is likely to be success, uh, successful, but I think we'll, we'll make a lot of progress. Musk said last year during an appearance before a National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine panel. SpaceX's Starship program has encountered setbacks on shorter altitude flights, and it isn't clear how much it would cost if something similar happened on an orbital mission. The company's strategy of accepting potential failures and learning from them has helped it develop spacecraft like Falcon 9, the workhorse rocket the company used on almost 60 launches this year through mid-December, former employees said. It's better to lose them now than to lose them because you left data on the table, because you were too scared to have a failure in public during the development phase," said Abhi Tripathi, who worked in several director roles at SpaceX and currently serves as Mission Operations Director at the University of California Berkeley Space Sciences Laboratory. At SpaceX, risk-taking as long as it is safe to personnel and to property is highly encouraged, Tripathi said. SpaceX is spending heavily on the Starship program, according to space industry analysts. The privately held company has raised significant funds lately, selling at least $6.1 billion in stock over the past three years, according to securities filings. SpaceX recently began marketing employee shares for sale at a price that would value the company at around $140 billion. Musk has warned that SpaceX could face bankruptcy if a severe global recession made capital and liquidity difficult to obtain while the company was investing in Starship and Starlink, its satellite internet business. Technical challenges with new rockets are common. In July, the company had to deal with a fiery blast underneath one of the Super Heavy boosters, though last month SpaceX said it completed a significant engine test. SpaceX also lost Starship prototypes. Two years ago, a Starship spacecraft flew a short altitude test flight without a booster, but smashed into the ground while trying to land. In May of 2021, the company landed a Starship spacecraft for the first time after another short flight. For the first orbital test, SpaceX expects to bring the booster down in the Gulf of Mexico and land the Starship spacecraft in the Pacific Ocean. 
Ocean near a Hawaiian island, according to a company filing with the Federal Communications Commission. Jeff Thornburg, a former SpaceX propulsion executive, said the company's biggest challenge is ensuring the Starship spacecraft can safely return to Earth. The vehicle will endure enormous stress and heat as it re-enters the atmosphere from orbit, he said, but is designed to be used quickly and repeatedly. Reusability brings a lot of complicated engineering because it can't just survive once. It's got to survive 10, 20, 100 plus times, he said. Of course, this was all foreseen by Musk himself. Because it'll take us a moment to achieve uh, full reusability and full and rapid reusability. Um, we'll probably lose a few vehicles along the way. Um, you know, with uh, Falcon 9, I think it took us 14 or 15 attempts to successfully land the first booster. Um, I don't think it'll take us that many with uh, Starship because we have that experience. Uh, but it's uh, certainly not a sure thing that it'll work the first time. And I think we should try to do that as soon as we can. When embarking on a, an endeavor, success should be at least one of the possible outcomes. According to space industry analysts and executives, if Starship doesn't work, the program could threaten to become a money pit for a company that already has two proven rockets, Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, that are partially reusable. But if it does work, Starship represents a quantum leap in spaceflight. SpaceX's vehicle would lower the cost to get to orbit and give the company a sophisticated new rocket system, Musk said earlier this year. Thus, no wonder some scientists who design and manage space exploration missions are starting to take a look at Musk's monstrous rocket. The Starship could also launch a series of landers directed towards some of the more interesting moons of the outer planets. For example, NASA has been studying a Europa lander as a follow-up to the Europa Clipper. Europa, a moon of Jupiter, is thought to have a subsurface ocean covered by a layer of ice that might be warm enough to contain extraterrestrial life. Saturn's moons Titan and Enceladus are also possible targets for landers. SpaceX's Starship may provide a solution to the human's versus robots problem by enabling both. Humans will return to the lunar surface on a human landing system Starship. Musk dreams of using the Starship to build a colony on Mars. The Starship will also enable a number of planetary missions that have so far, so far been too expensive and too big to fit into existing rockets. Everyone wins. In short, once Starship becomes operational, a new era of space conquest will commence. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.